People of the internet, I tried to quit Apple. I honestly did, but ultimately I failed. And along the way, I learned a few important lessons. I'm gonna tell you what those lessons are, but the big takeaway for me is coming at the end of this video when I tell you exactly what I learned from this whole situation and how I'm gonna move forward with what I do. Maybe it'll help you with what you do. A few months ago, I made a video about how I was leaving Apple behind. I had a list of reasons that all seemed like they made tons. Of, well, they did make tons of sense. And you can watch that video. I'll link it down in the description below. It's been one of my most successful videos of the past couple of years. And for a couple of months, I did make the switch over to Windows and it was, it was great. Everything was great. But a few months later, I went back to Apple. Let's first get to lesson number one. Of course, the grass is always greener on the other side until it isn't. Now, I love building PCs. I've owned many PCs before. I love tinkering with tech. I love that whole aspect of it. But after a while, once that new car smell wears off, I found that working on a PC for me was equally as problematic as Apple was for me, just in different ways. It was better in some ways, but in some very important ways, it became more challenging. Most of what I do in my work involves audio and video, Windows has come a long way since the days when Apple was the brand for the creators and Windows was for the accountants or however you want to put it. The lines are much blurrier now, and that's that's a good thing. I know plenty of people who do the same work that I do on Windows. They do it well, they do it happily, they do it efficiently, they have no problems whatsoever. And I'm not saying that this is a Windows versus Mac thing. It's just more what happened for me. I love that I could buy my PC to spec. I could build my PC to spec with parts that were purpose made for the work, like the Elgato Camlink Pro. Four HDMI ports straight into the motherboard meant that I could record 4K without having you know external boxes and do ads and stuff like that hanging off my computer. It was a clean setup in a way that modern Macs have not really been for a while, although the more recent machines have brought back ports and, you know, are seemingly considering professional needs. But here's where the pain points started to come in. Going to PC meant that I needed to move away from three applications I used to get the majority of my work done. There were plenty of other applications on the Windows side that could replace them, but these particular applications were Mac specific. And while I have used and am familiar with the other apps that would be on Windows, I don't know them as well, nor do they have the same workflow or feature set as the applications I left behind. Uh, mainly I'm talking about Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, and Ecamm Live. I've been a Logic user since before Apple bought the program. <laughs> which was like 2002. It was first put together by a company called eMagic. When Apple bought Logic, they overhauled the whole thing, making it better and easier to use for a one-time purchase of, I believe, $2.99 back then, but it's $1.99 now. I paid that price one time, and I have gotten updates for the software to Logic 10 and well beyond, bringing all kinds of crazy new features that have come to be like, more important than I thought they were in my workflow. I'm nowhere near as proficient with Final Cut Pro as I am with Logic, but I've been using it since about 2016 to edit my videos. And of course, I couldn't continue using Logic or Final Cut on the PC because they're Mac only. I've used the Adobe Suite professionally for many, many years. And when I was in education, I got the whole Adobe Suite for $10 a year and that was great. But now that I'm out on my own, once that license for that year wore off, I was looking at $30 a month and I didn't want to spend $30 a month for a lot of programs that honestly for this I wouldn't use. So I decided to try DaVinci Resolve and there's nothing wrong with the Resolve. It has a lot of cool features that I just didn't know. <laughs> and my video edits, because I had really not worked with Resolve at all and it was different enough from Final Cut, it went from taking me an hour or two to finish a rough edit to like twice that, maybe even more. And the same goes for Ecamm. If you're not familiar with Ecamm, I film all my videos straight into the computer using Ecamm Live as kind of like a live streaming software that also records. And it has a lot of really user-friendly things going on 
there's a lot of things that Ecamm has built into their app that a program like OBS doesn't have. There are many people out there who use OBS and it's like their firstborn child and they know it really well, but I didn't know it that well. Trying to do this, sit down, make videos, get things done. Uh, when I started using OBS, I started really missing some of Ecamm's built-in stuff and simplicity to the point where it was causing me to sit and, and work with the program as much as I was sitting and trying to get the videos done. And that leads me to lesson number two. Time is your most valuable resource. Now that's true in everything. Time is free and you always have some, but if you waste it, you cannot buy more. Switching to a Windows-based workflow cost me ultimately a lot of time. Had I stuck with it, that would have evened out in the long run, maybe, you know, six months, eight months, a year down the road. But as a solo creator, I can only get done as much as I have time to get done. And so it just became sort of a fight against time. My business, my channel, my creativity suffers. I put out less content. I don't have time to work on other creative projects like writing or music. And it starts to cut into, you know, either I don't spend time with my family and continue to work or, or I quit working and spend time with my family. This isn't a problem for everyone, but it's something that for me was pretty important. Uh, my grandson lives with us now and I want to be there helping to, you know, take care of him. Even if we're just watching TV in the evening, being there and hanging out with my wife and my grandson uh, is a big deal to me. So choosing a harder path to getting my work done caused me more stress than I wanted to deal with, not to mention I already wasn't doing as much for this channel as I had planned to do. I was running into more and more problems that, quite frankly, a move back to the Mac would solve. And that brings me to lesson number three. Output is more important than principles or curiosity or just the interest in something new. My business is an output business. If I'm not making videos, writing, making music, getting those things done efficiently with as little friction as possible, I'm not doing a good job. If the tools I'm using are, are hindering me, for whatever reason, I need to assess whether or not those are the right tools and ultimately, that's what happened when I switched to Windows. I know Windows pretty well, but I haven't developed the kind of familiarity with Windows, especially on the creative side, as I have with Apple and their products. I've been using Macs since like 1992. I've used them in professional settings for more than 25 years. I've created countless pieces of work, recorded albums, edited a thousand videos. Every time I sat down to do the same work, with Windows, I felt like I was half blind. Just you know, the muscle memory that I have for Macs and that I built over 30 years wasn't there. And 30 years of experience and familiarity can't be obtained in months of doing the same work on a different platform. So I went back to Mac. I went back to Apple. There are still plenty of things that I don't like about Apple and their business model. I don't like that their, their base model computers are often great deals, but as soon as you add more, the prices balloon. If you buy a base Mac mini, it's $600, but if you add a little bit more RAM and a little bit more storage, suddenly you're at, you're at $1,200. And that to me just doesn't seem like the way to treat your loyal customers, but that's how Apple does their thing. If you're a PC person, it might seem foreign to you because with PCs, you can add on, you can do all kinds of different stuff over time. But with Mac, you have to buy what you think you're gonna need at the time you think you're gonna need it. Now that's a whole different conversation. I ended up to get the Mac that I felt like I needed to do all the stuff I needed to do. I got a MacBook Pro that cost me $3,500, which is a lot of money. But I'm looking at it now as an investment in the long term. I could have gotten the work done with a, a less expensive MacBook or something like that. But if I wanted to get the work done and not have the computer be the bottleneck keeping me from getting things done. I felt like I needed to spend money on the specs. Honestly, 95% of everybody who buys a Mac could very well be happy with a base Mac mini or a base MacBook Air or something like that. Apple is very good at getting us to overspend, especially now that the Apple Silicon chips are, are here and they're so good, even at the lower price spec. I mean, it used to be if you wanted to pay less, you had to get an i3. And whoever wanted an i3? No one ever wanted an i3. In fact, while the MacBook Pro is my main working and editing computer, I run this whole video setup, all these cameras, audio, et cetera, et cetera, off an M1 Mac 
with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And it's never let me down. It's always been right there ready. So while I spent $3,500 on my main computer, a 16 inch MacBook Pro, M1 Max chip, one terabyte of storage, 32 gigs of RAM. And as much as that price tag is very hefty, the computer has to this point in the, I think probably four or five months that I've had it, never slowed me down. And that much I appreciate. That's ultimately what I learned from this whole experiment. Mac or Windows doesn't really matter. What matters is getting the things that you need to get done, done. And in the end, you should always use the tools that help you do that faster with as little friction as possible. As a YouTuber, I get caught up in all these like, you know, conversations about which is better, this or that. Ultimately, the thing that's better is the tool that helps you get your work done. For me, regardless of how I feel about Apple the company, Apple products are the way that I can do that. I'm happier getting things done these days than I am standing on principle or, or you know, trying to save a buck and doing less. It might be different for you, but for me, that's the lesson that I've learned when I tried, I tried to leave Apple and I just failed.